Good morning. Thanks to Jay and Vicki for interpreting. Today marks the last day of these formal briefings on our community response to COVID-19. I remember thinking in the beginning when we first started, when we started hosting the briefings every day, that this would likely be for a month or two. A year and a half later, I am happy to share that we are finally seeing consistent downward trends in all categories and finally starting to open up and feel more normal. And so, so as a result of that, we are going to conclude the briefings today. As always, I'm going to get right to the numbers. Um, the number of positive cases in Hamilton County sit at 80,780. Hospitalizations, 3,158. And the number of people that we have lost in Hamilton County to COVID-19 is 1,228. Looking back, my goal with these sessions was to give the public straightforward information about COVID-19. I could not have carried out this goal without the expertise and the partnership of so many people in this community who generously gave of their time in the midst of a pandemic to lend perspective to the situation on the ground. I'm gonna list out some of those partners. Uh, first, Commissioner Alicia Reese, who was back and forth in it uh, with the briefings here lately, uh, taking every other one. Commissioner Summer O'Dumas and Commissioner Victoria Parks. Both Sheriff Neal and Sheriff McGuffey have been on. Clerk of Courts Aftab Pierval and Judge Charles Kabicki have been on from the county. Also, our EMA Director Nick Crosley has been on a couple of times, County Administrator Jeff Aludo, and Assistant County Administrator Holly Chrisman. Some other regulars uh, on the briefing were Chief Executive Officer at UC Health, Dr. Rick Lofgren, and Senior Manager of External Affairs at the Health Collab, Krista Heisen. We also had many community partners, special guests, uh, come on to the briefings. I'm just gonna list a few, but it was so critical to us to have their expertise and their information as part of the briefing. Maura Weir, Gwen McFarlane, Alex Trantafilu, Sherry Poland, and Sally Crissel, all at, over, over at the BOE. Eric Kearney, Renee Mahaffey Harris, Tim McCartney, Chiefs Tom Sinan and Commander Tom Fallon. We had vaccination stories. This was one of my favorite briefings with Ali Trianfo, Bobby Hilton, and Tropicana, and followed it up with Willie Cunningham. Kate Schroeder was on a number of times, as was Regina Carswell Russo, Jean Francois Fleche, Dr. Megan Rich, Dr. Brittany Punches, Dr. Patty Manning, and Dr. Steve Baggins. I'm finishing out the names. <laughs> Jay, poor Jay. Um, it has been a challenging time, and providing regular factual information from local leaders and health experts has been a great way to keep everybody in the loop. Also, thanks to all the media partners for pushing out this information we couldn't have done it without you. So on this last official briefing day, I would like to do three things. First, soberly recognize the devastating toll this virus has taken and continues to take on our community. Second, share some thoughts on ways that this community emerged, emerged stronger. And finally, thank the team who week after week came to this briefing room to help deliver the news and ensure the questions got answered. Most of the people who caught COVID-19 recovered from the virus. For that, we should be grateful. But unfortunately, many people in Hamilton County lost their lives to COVID-19, and many more had serious medical issues as a result of catching COVID-19. We mourn this loss of life and recognize that the loved ones left behind are still suffering.
We also know that the virus is still present in our community. And the most effective way to keep from getting this virus is to get a vaccine. While it's hard to find a silver lining from this experience, I do believe that there are some lessons learned and even some areas where our collective efforts have made us stronger. Sorry. We have strengthened our health system. Through the Health Collaborative, area hospitals came together in an unprecedented way to keep people safe and healthy, especially through their testing and vaccination efforts. We have addressed health disparities the outsized impact of COVID-19 on communities of color have made us even more determined than ever to address systematic health disparities in this community. We have a better appreciation of first responders and frontline workers. COVID made us better understand the sacrifices our first responders make every day to make our community safe and directed our attention to the hard work of our frontline workers who we sometimes take for granted. We have fought overdoses. Hamilton County overdose deaths were flat in 2020, while they skyrocketed in other major cities. The Addiction Response Coalition has met weekly during the height of the pandemic to pivot their outreach efforts and coordinate their response. We have improved the lives through federal funding. The CARES Act funding and the American Rescue Plan have allowed the county to invest federal dollars to keep people in their homes, keep small businesses open, keep the people experiencing homelessness sheltered, ensure that people have access to testing and then the vaccine, provide PPE to first responders and businesses, helped our local government partners and assisted our nonprofit and arts community and the list goes on, and we are in the middle of allocating those dollars right now through the American Rescue Plan. We have improved coordination amongst governments. The need for consistent and frequent information sharing provided an opportunity for the City of Cincinnati and Hamilton County to work together through multiple partnerships. It also provided a similar opportunity with the other 48 jurisdictions in Hamilton County. So we have come together as a community. And thank you to the community for stepping up, offering to help the most fragile and vulnerable among us. People stepped up to take meals to shut-ins, to provide rides to vaccine clinics, to lend a supportive voice to those struggling with isolation, to help kids learn remotely, to keep people settled in a very unsettled time. As Greg would say, people were kind. I hope that this is part of the legacy of COVID-19. Lastly, I would like to thank the team that helped put this together every week. COVID introduced us to the effer, effervescent Jay Gates. and the ever patient Vicki Emerson, his cohort. It resurrected the radio voice of Bridget Doherty, shared the audiovisual expertise of Scott Thompson and Nick Schell at Resolve, enlisted the speech writing skills of Brian McCleary and my former chief of staff, Alex Linzer, and finally, made us all realize just how good Greg Kesterman is at his job as the Hamilton County Health Commissioner, offering a smart and steady voice while following the science. We are so lucky to have him at the helm. So I am so grateful for the expertise, the determination, and the humor that this team has brought every week. So with that, as always, I'm gonna turn it over to Greg Kesterman. Well, good morning, and thank you, Commissioner Driehaus, for that uh, warm welcome. I appreciate it very much. It's been a great partnership, 
And um, I've really enjoyed this opportunity to update the public and to keep everyone abreast of what's happening in our community. We continue to see all trends heading in the right direction, which is fantastic news. Cases and hospitalizations have been decreasing week after week. In fact, Hamilton County is doing so well that for the first time since October, eight months ago, we transitioned to orange. We are no longer considered a county with high incidence, which is really great news. I think a large part of this is the vaccinations. More than half of our county has been vaccinated, but it's also because we as a community have come together and are working together to return things to normal. Looking at the data, our worst was back in December when we saw 716 cases per day. Right now, we are down to 41 cases per day, so we have seen just such a drastic decrease in the number of cases here within our community. Week after week, I do continue to remind folks that there still is COVID, and we must still be careful, and there is still an impact from COVID. Right now, if you took a snapshot, there are about 2,400 cases of COVID within our community. So we still need to just be cautious. We still need to not forget those tools that we have talked about since February a year ago, which include washing your hands, and if you're sick, keeping sick at home, and covering your cough. These tools should remain with us regardless of if there's a pandemic. These tools are how we keep one another healthy. In addition to the cases, um, I have been updating on the variants. We still are set at 16 known variants within Hamilton County. Um, I am certain that there are more variants here that we are not aware of because they've been untested. I've said this several times now, but the great news is if you're concerned about variants, get vaccinated. The vaccines work against the variants. Also tied to cases is our reproductive number. We have now been below 1.0 for many, many, many weeks. Today we are at 0.97 for Hamilton County and 0.98 for the region. We are also seeing a continued decline in the number of patients within our hospital systems. Today in our 14 county region, there are 109 patients within our hospitals. There are 37 patients within the intensive care unit and 27 of those individuals are on ventilators. Just a a reminder, if you're concerned about becoming hospitalized, the COVID vaccine has been proven time and time again to keep our, our community healthy and out of the hospital. Nearly the number one way to keep yourself out of the hospital with COVID is to get vaccinated. As mentioned, as a community, we really have done a great job with providing vaccine and getting vaccine out to our residents. 380,000 people in Hamilton County have now had the vaccine, and that number goes up week after week. We have seen a slowdown in the rate of appointments filling and clinics filling. Some of that, though, is because we now have over 200 locations in Hamilton County where you can get the vaccine. So if you want to find one of those locations, visit testandprotectcincy.com. Those locations are mapped and are easy to find. Many of them are walk-in appointments, which is fantastic news. Also great news is that eight out of 10 people over the age of 65, 80% of those over the age of 65 are now vaccinated. Throughout this pandemic, you have heard that those are the most susceptible people to COVID-19 and getting severe illness. So as a community, we came together and successfully reached our goal for those over the age of 65. We still have work for those younger than 65, and that is what our continued daily efforts are are focused on. We know that now individuals 12 and older can get vaccine, and we have seen thousands of those individuals within Hamilton County getting vaccinated. So even though things are getting back to normal, the pandemic is anything but over. As our medical director said earlier this week, the longer we take to vaccinate, the more chance there is for variants to evolve. It's easy, it's available, and it's free. And who knows, you could possibly even win a million bucks through the Vaximillion campaign. Public health orders are over in less than a week. Um, They're being lifted as Governor DeWine shared. Please don't forget, as I already mentioned, the basics of infectious disease um, control. I'm asking you to continue to cover your cough, continue to keep sick at home, continue to do the things that we know like hand washing and how important it is at the prevention of the spread of disease. If you're concerned, you can continue to wear your mask. No one is making you take it off. It's just no longer required. So please work together as a community and we will continue to be successful at ending this pandemic. Thank you.
So before we go to questions, um, we have a little montage, just as a reminder of where we've come from uh, and where we are now, because this has been a long slog for about a year and a half here. Um, and so we're gonna share that video with you real quick before we go to questions. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first daily briefing here at the County Administration Building. Today feels like a gut punch because we are reporting two deaths today. It's a, it feels like a very dramatic shift in um, what we're dealing with here in Hamilton County. All right. So I know these are sobering times, I know. And I know there are challenges and I know people are struggling. However, there is a bright spot. I really want you to focus on yourself and making sure that you're doing everything within your power and your family's power to, pre to create an environment of social distancing. Wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. Stay home if you're sick, treat workers with respect, and most of all, be kind. We are trying desperately to help as many businesses stay open in Hamilton County as we can. Go get tested. We've got free testing in this community and it is so easy to get. Thank you, Jay, for being here this morning. I'm gonna back up so you can get a better visual. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay's got me by about a foot and a half. Greg Kesterman, I've been introducing him and I've, I fudge this a little bit sometimes. He's been the interim health commissioner for Hamilton County. He is now the permanent uh, health commissioner in Hamilton County. So congratulations to Greg. I'm very fortunate to have three county commissioners that understand public health. So with that, we're gonna go to questions, Bridget. Next question is from Scott Wartman of The Inquirer. Am I up? Hello? Can you hear? Oh, I'm getting used to the new technology. Okay, and that appears to complete our questions from reporters. Well, the news has been positive lately. First vaccinations are going up. More than 340,000 people in Hamilton County have been vaccinated, which is huge. And we're excited to see that continue to grow week after week. Uh, Ohio's had a lot of compliments, and I think the work we have done here in Hamilton County um, should go notice because uh, we worked hard as a county and we made this, uh, made this uh, pandemic less impactful here as well. Jay, I don't know if you got that. I know. <laughs> so. Jay's sweating back here again. So let's be safe out there, and we'll be back next week. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Thanks again to the team who is um, up on the screen. Thank you, thank you. All right, Bridget, let's go to questions. London from News 5 has questions. Yeah, uh, Denise, I think my favorite part of the uh, montage moment was Scott uh, Wortman's high tech challenge, uh, just just as an aside. Uh, the the first, yeah. uh, what's that? It's a media partners struggle with technology. I, I get it, by the way. Yeah. The uh, the first Maximilian drawing, as you know, is nine hours away, uh, Denise. And the, the feds have now blessed going to DeWide's uh, gambit for all fifty states, as you also know. What's your assessment about what Maximilian has done? relative to Ohio's vaccination rate so far? Well, I, I think we know that they've increased because of Vaximillion. I'm signed up and I'm hoping to win, John. And if I do, I pledge to share half of it with you. I, you've got my pledge. Um, that's how confident I am that I'm going to win. But um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's increased the number of people that have gotten vaccinated. And so we have tried an a number of different strategies, both at the state level and locally, to encourage people to get vaccinated. So is it gimmicky? Maybe. Did it help? Yeah. So, you know, okay. I mean, we've been, gosh, Greg has talked about all the locations we've gone to. We were out at a brewery, uh, was it last week or the week before? Because that's where people are. Uh, we're at mobile home parks. We're at schools. We're at senior buildings. So whatever we need to do to encourage people to get vaccinated, I'm, for, I'm all for it. Um, 52% as a region is what Kate Schroeder told us yesterday, uh, one dose. The goal is 80%, as, as you know, five, it's just five weeks from now. She's no longer sounding all that optimistic about uh, hitting it. Um, if we fall 15 to 20% short, what practically will that mean for Hamilton County daily life in your view? 
So as always, I'm going to kick this one over to Greg because it's a difficult question. Um, but I, I will uh, just lend, you know, I think 80% uh, percent was optimistic to begin with. We all acknowledged that in the beginning. But we needed to be optimistic about how many folks might get vaccinated. So, you know, Greg has this great chart, and I, he clearly doesn't have it with him today, but this is my favorite chart of, and I've talked about it a million times, where we've got these curves of all the age groups, and every single one of them are going up, every single one of them, and they've never dipped. None of them have. And so we are continuing to vaccinate people. Might it take longer? Might, maybe so, uh, but we are continuing to trend up. So, Greg, I'm going to kick the hard part to you. So, ideally, John, we would get everyone vaccinated in Hamilton County, 100% of folks, because we know how effective the vaccine is. Unfortunately, we know that there will be a portion of the population that does not choose to get vaccinated, and that's their choice. As shared just a few moments ago, though, those over 65, we have met our goal. We have vaccinated 80% of individuals over 65, which is commendable. And that is in large part due to the number of partners we have here in Hamilton County. Our five hospital systems, our four health departments, and many, many pharmacies throughout the county have put tremendous effort and thought into getting vaccine out to our community. My team at Hamilton County Public Health week after week continues to amaze me with the ideas and the locations that they come up with on how we can get vaccine straight to the arms of the folks that need it. And so while we may not hit the July 4th deadline that was set as a region, I think we will continue to work towards 80% countywide. And I think we will get there. It just might not be by July 4th. Let me ask you one other uh, quick thing and, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pause, maybe come back with a couple more, but um, do you get the sense that June 2nd is is now among the most anticlimactic days of the calendar, except for restaurants who will no longer be limited inside? You got Memorial Day weekend almost here. And there are a lot of people that I run into, Greg, that are going around saying essentially, what pandemic? You know, uh, June 2nd was a huge announcement by Governor DeWine, and then it was quickly um, overturned a little bit by the announcement from the Centers for Disease Control. But the truth is, what we're finding through science is that the vaccine works. And so while the Centers for Disease Control announcement took a little of the thunder away from June 2nd, that's okay, because it means that we are able to get life back to normal. It means the vaccine is working in a way that no other vaccine in the United States has ever worked. And it's great news that after June 2nd, some of these orders can be lifted and we as a, we as a community can continue to heal. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll have a couple more here in a moment. Next up, we have Corey Sharber with WVXU. Good morning, Corey. Good morning, Greg. Of course, this is the final COVID-19 briefing. Um, of course, like we, we've seen the numbers, how they've just just lower dramatically since the winter months. Um, of course, this this being the final one, it is sort of a celebratory occasion, um, especially considering that you know the CDC is is lowering guidelines time and time again. Um, is it still too early to you know for a celebration in a way? I know that of course now we have the vaccine out and that's leading to a lot of lower numbers, but there is still a lot of COVID in the community. Is it still too early to sort of go crazy with everything? Corey, I think there is still a lot of COVID in our community and we must, as a community, continue to be cautious. That cautious, um, cautious will look different for different people. I think we should celebrate that vaccines work. And if you've been vaccinated, I think you should be able to celebrate that you have new freedoms and safety that you never had chance to have before. That said, for folks who have not been vaccinated, some may choose to get vaccine and some may not. And I think there's still a significant risk if you are choosing not to get vaccinated. So as a community and as a public health team, we are watching very closely. We'll continue to watch these numbers and make sure to inform the public as, as we see changes within our COVID footprint here in Hamilton County. And I know you mentioned that um, you know vaccine numbers are going down. That might be connected, but just there's so many locations now that you can pretty much just walk in anywhere and get a vaccine right away. Um, how big of a boost could um, could children give to the vaccinated population? As you know, they've I've seen recently since any public schools has been vaccinating students from the age of 12 and up. How much of a boost could that give going forward? 
you know, our smallest age group currently um, that has been vaccinated because they've had the least opportunity to get vaccinated is those between 12 and 18. As you know, most of um, the, the vaccination effort did not allow for those individuals to be vaccinated. And so there is a lot of opportunity there. We also know that there are studies under underway right now currently to look at vaccinating individuals that are, I think, two and older. So the sooner we can get those vaccines approved and out into the public safely, the sooner our community will have a greater protection against COVID-19. Now, um, my following questions are both for you and Denise, um, if she doesn't mind coming up. I, uh, it's It's been a, a really crazy, uh, whole period of life we've been living this past year. I mean, I just started my job here, uh, jumped right into the middle of a wave, which, you know, was very uh, stressful and awesome all at the same time. Um, during this time, though, I mean, you've uh, you've gotten a promotion and you've, um, you know, had to take, take control of a public health organization in the middle of, you know, something only occurs every century. I just Could you just go over like the a mental toll the virus has taken on you and your colleagues during all of this? You know, it has been certainly quite a journey um, and taking over in February as interim health commissioner a year and five months ago um, certainly was a challenge. But I have been fortunate throughout this pandemic to work with such great people. I have three county commissioners who support public health who have worked closely with my team. I have county administration who has done the same. And I have 118 people at my work that are just amazing. And I'm very fortunate to have them working together for the same cause. If you don't mind, I like to hear from, if Denise is available, I like to hear her thoughts on just the craziness that's taking place. Yeah, you saw it a little bit in the montage, right? It, 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 I, it's hard for me to remember where we started. It, would, it seems like a million years ago. That was just such a different time when we first started to talk about this new virus, COVID-19, uh, and what it would mean to this community. and. I frankly didn't think uh, a year and a half later we'd be standing here still talking about COVID-19. Uh, we just didn't know what we were in for. Um, but I, I think we, we must remember the lives lost. You know, we lost over a thousand people in Hamilton County. Um, I know people that lost people. Uh, we heard from people that lost people. Um, so it's been devastating to many people in this community. Uh, and folks are still struggling with the impacts of the loss and the mental toll. I heard a lot about mental health during this time and the mental health toll that the isolation took on not only individuals that um, were challenged or vulnerable, but everybody, right? Kids are struggling, parents are struggling, everybody's had this common experience and common struggle. Uh, and so I think it's an interesting thing to have a whole community go through the same thing at the same time and come out or start to come out, I guess, on the other end. Um, so I don't wanna lose track of the loss because I think it's the primary thing that we need to remember. But as I talked about, we did come together as a community and it's not just the individuals that you know participated in the briefings it was the entire community stepping up and saying we're going to do our part and they did and so i think it in some ways has brought this community closer together where we can acknowledge the assets that we all bring understand that we can help one another just by reaching out and making a phone call or waving to the neighbor you know across the fence or whatever it is um, that we all have a part to play in this recovery um, and i think that's what we're st we're seeing uh, in the community so it, it's just it's been a super interesting time you know uh, when i we first started this as i said uh we, we closed down the building right i mean see we've we've been working virtually for months uh so it, it's been hard but uh we're coming out and i think we're coming out a little bit stronger when it comes to the community side of this and speaking of work working virtually of course that's made my job a lot easier i can just wear pajamas and t-shirts and and report on all this stuff um but like we've made so many changes um in in the past year because of the pandemic um how many of those changes will be kept going forward like you know like having like this space so people can comment virtually and, um, you know, all the different uh, methods of outreach that you guys use to get people vaccinated to get out and vote, how much of that is going to be kept going forward? I'm glad you asked, because that was going to be my, the last thing I mentioned at the briefing. Um, it's not like we're stopping the work, right? Um, we're we're going to 
stop doing the briefings because so much of this work is being picked up at the county commission meetings. That's where uh, Greg's coming in once a month uh, to provide us with the health updates to make sure that we're all up to speed. Uh, we don't know what the future holds, but we need to have Greg in to continue to remind us about what we all need to be doing to eliminate COVID-19 in Hamilton County. The other piece of this is the federal money. We have not yet allocated the American Rescue Plan dollars. We're in the middle of that process. Had a public, last, hit public hearing last night, have another one on Thursday. The big news will come when we finally pass that plan and provide that relief to this community, both in the short term, the emergent needs, and the long term uh, related to things like mental health and housing and child care. So um, we're going to continue to do this work. We're just going to uh, have that be focused on at our staff meetings and board meetings. And our meetings are going to look a little different. Um, so my understanding is the, the building is going to open up on June 1st or June 2nd. Um, the, we, we are following the CDC guidance related to masking. Um, but this commission will come back. I think it's it, it, Commissioner Summer Dumas, I think it said beginning of July. Uh, and so we'll be back in person, which I frankly will welcome because I'm an in-person kind of person. But um, I think we are going to try to better understand if we can bring folks in virtually, folks that are unable for whatever reason to participate in person bring them in virtually and allow them that opportunity so you're right COVID has taught us that we can get a lot done virtually um, and I think we're going to build upon that the other pieces some of our employees when I think of uh, some of the JFS caseworkers um, it's easier for them to to be out they're out in the community they don't always have to come down to the Alms and Depke building to fill out their paperwork. Some of that can be done virtually. And so we are trying to adjust as an institution to make sure that what has been the positive piece related to what you're talking about is something that we think about and implement in our regular practices. That's all my questions. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next, we have Mark Wart with the Inquirer, and he has questions for Greg. Good morning, Mark. Greg. Good morning, Greg. Hello? We can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, first of all, thanks to you and, and the commissioners for doing this. This has been uh, uh, pretty extraordinary. And, and uh, I think uh, I know that journalists appreciate it, and I think the public does too. Uh, Thank you. My question, um, you mentioned that caution looks different for different people. Can you, can you elaborate a bit there on what, that, what you meant there? Yes. So I think there are certainly families that have significant illness still within the family. Somebody might be recovering from a disease or working to get healthy from an Ill illness. And I think those families probably will exercise significantly more caution than others. I think also coming out of this pandemic really happened fairly quickly. You know, June 2nd announcement was a bit of a surprise. The number of people that were just so surprised and shocked by it um, was quite a few. And I think as folks try to get back to normal and adjust, I think it will take time. You know, masks were put in place because of COVID-19, but masks actually work for all infectious disease. You may have gone to the doctor five years ago and been surprised to see a doctor or a nurse wear a mask you know they do that because it controls infectious disease spread so as we move beyond this pandemic people may choose to wear masks for many reasons and the same um, kindness that i've asked for throughout the pandemic i would just ask folks to understand that each person is looking at the end of this pandemic in different ways and so um, let's just continue as a community to show respect for people and work as a community to to end this pandemic And second, uh, um, so we're, we're, you're going to be doing monthly briefings and you're going to you're be doing the surveillance. Um, uh, as we are inside more in October or November and variants are still out and about, uh, you, and, and, and the, you know, it, if we looked at different counties, we'd see different, very different vaccination rates. I'm assuming that also happens if we looked at the data by zip code. It looks different in different parts of the county. Are you concerned about, you know, potentially 
uh, small rekindles in different parts of the county uh, our, as we go the fall? Yes. So our epidemiologists will be looking very closely at the data and we will be trying to figure out if there are hot spots in, in the fall that we see occur. I can't say enough that the vaccine works. So the number one tool, if we go to one of those communities that might be seeing an increase, will be to once again encourage folks to get vaccinated. My hope is that by fall, we have that 80% that we've been talking about all throughout Hamilton County vaccinated. And so we won't have as much concern here in Hamilton County as maybe some other communities that are less likely to uptake the vaccine might experience. So we'll continue to watch closely. Uh, for those folks that need information, our website, we continue to update it daily at 2 p.m., seven days a week with cases. Uh, we update the variants once a week on our homepage so you can see changes in the variants. Um, and then in addition, we offer links to the Ohio Department of Health webpage, which shows vaccination rates and changes in vaccine within our community. So we are going to continue to try and be as transparent with data and information as possible. And Mark, I would ask that if there's something that's missing, just let us know, work with our public information officer and we'll work to try and include it because our goal is to continue to make sure to get information to the public as quickly as possible. I will take that. Uh, I will take that to heart. Thank you. So I, yeah, I'm going to follow up just a little bit. I, I should have done kind of Board of County Commissioners 101 because I now recognize that not ever everyone understands that we meet twice a week. Uh, we meet on Tuesdays and we meet on Thursdays. And so what I was describing earlier about the work continuing is uh, Greg coming in to one of the staff meetings once a month. He's been coming in every other week, uh, which has been very helpful. And so once a month, Greg will be in to continue to talk about the health impacts of COVID-19. And then we as a commission also talk about related issues, both at the staff meetings and at the Thursday meetings. So there are still opportunities um, to they have people get the information that they need, um, even though we're not continuing to have the briefings. Now, we don't know what the future holds. And I'm not going to look into a crystal ball um, but these briefings started because this community needed this information quickly uh, directly and so you know if that's a need in the future I can't speak for my colleagues but um, you know we did step into that space and I would expect that we'd step into that space again if the need were were there so just want to offer that as an anecdote thank you thanks Mark uh, next up, we have John London with News 5, who has a follow-up question. Yeah, just a quick fo a couple of follows up. I was glad, uh, Denise, that Corey asked about, uh, and, and you've explained a little bit about the building reopening June 2nd. You're back in person July, you said? That's right. Back in person in July. And uh, what, what will the county administration um, setting look like? Will there still be distancing? Or, or sometimes, you know, those meetings are pretty packed. Uh, will the county administration and the courthouse um, be back to pre-pandemic? Well, no, we're not going to be back to pre-pandemic. We've got sanitizers everywhere. Um, you know, we've got touchless um, soap dispensers and paper. I mean, we, we've made adjustments. Um, we've got PPE available. Um, I do believe that we will um, start to adjust knowing that a lot of folks uh, amongst our staff have gotten vaccinated. And so, you know, as Greg has alluded, and we've alluded to this before, if folks are vaccinated, you know, Greg and I have both been vaccinated. We can stand together. Jay and I have been vaccinated. We can stand closer to one another than we could a few months ago pre-vaccination. So, you know, we are adjusting um, to to the reality of the vaccine. And so in the brief or the, um, the ch what I call the chambers, which is really just the meeting room uh, where we have our meetings, you know, we're distancing a little bit uh, for the public who are more comfortable with continuing to have some distance. The commissioners will be, some, but we're all vaccinated. Uh, and so we have the ability now to not need to distance like we did before um, the mask piece will be as the CDC has recommended, which is if you've been vaccinated, you no longer need to wear the mask in the building. If you have not been vaccinated, you still should wear the mask. And, and just uh, one more uh, to clarify, uh, earlier you said 
that if you uh, won the Vax a million, um, that you would share it. Here we go. So it, that that's on the record, I think. I, I know, that I know. You know, after I did it, John, I was kind of kidding, but now I know you're going to hold me to it. So if I, I win, this, I'll split it half seas with you. I have the uh, I have the tape saved. Thank you. We, we thank can you. both retire, John. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that appears that it concludes our questions from reporters. All right, very good. So thanks again. Thanks thanks a million <laughs> to the reporters. Um, could not have done this without you. Uh, you have been so critical to pushing out information. You've joined us every week or every day, as the case may be. Um, so, you know, thanks for the partnership. It's just been critically important. Uh, and again, I want to thank the team. Um, this is not an easy production. Um, we had a build some things here uh, at the county in order to have this be as seamless as it has been. And so the expertise and the debt, it's really the dedication of the people that are sitting in this room right now um, has been amazing uh, throughout this process. And so I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for the partnership broadly, but the partnership in this room and uh, everyone keeping a sense of humor uh, as we've struggled through some of these really challenging um, times here in Hamilton County. So with that, uh, with your indulgence, everyone, I'm gonna bring the team up. They're very nervous about leaving the computer screens, uh, but anyway, they're gonna do it. So uh, let's say thanks to the team. And Vicky's on the screen. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Signing off from the county building.